Big Jones, the juggernaut, at my house. Can you even believe that? I'm actually sitting in my house where I pay rent. I mean, it's like I'm never here. When Seriously, when was the last time I actually did a podcast in my house? Like, this is actually kind of weird for me. But anyway, yeah, I'm actually in my house today because I'm on leave. I am actually took some leave. It's actually the last leave I'm going to take before I get out of the Navy. But that's a different story. We'll get to that. So I want to jump right into what I want to talk about today because what I want to talk about is a little weird and I feel like... Um, I'm not sure how this is going to go. It was just an idea that I had that I wanted to talk about because it is kind of a weird story, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, uh, it starts with me telling you guys that I, I, um, I experienced my sexual awakening during college, like a lot of people tend to. You know, I, I went away to college, not too far. I grew up in San Diego, and I went just up north uh, to go to college in the Los Angeles area, and... Uh, <clears throat> Um, I went to college, and my first year of college, I really developed that reputation of just being kind of a, just kind of a weird guy. I don't know. I mean, kind of like what I am now, but just a little less informed, I guess. I don't know. I've, I've never been like the cool guy. I don't know. I'm not a cool guy. I just kind of am the way I am, and you know, that's kind of what it is. You know, I kind of like I like to crack jokes. I like to have fun. You know, I don't like to be too serious all the time. That's just who I've always been. So. You know, I'm not, I'm not like cool and suave, you know, but that whole thing kind of shone through. So my first whole year of college, I didn't get, I, I didn't have a girlfriend. I didn't really have any female interaction at all, you know, so that first year I kind of tanked it. So I came back my second year and it was only a matter of time before some she devil took my V card, some redheaded wench ran away with my V card. <laughs> <laughs> I tell my friends a story like, oh, yeah, I made sweet love to that lady for 11 whole seconds, you know. <laughs> but anyway, we dated for that entire second semester of my second year of college, and then I went to Arizona State. So um, we broke up. I forget the exact circumstances that we broke up under. I don't know. I was 19, and she was getting kind of clingy. I hate to use that word. I know, you know, women complain about, oh, you say I'm clingy. And then I know I try to do nice things for you. You call it clingy, but then I pull back and it's like, we're not spending enough time together. Look, little ladies, I'm not, I'm, I don't know. I, I've barely figured out females. I don't envy you ladies who have to figure out how to deal with males. I really don't because we're just as nutty as you guys are. I don't, I don't blame you for 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 being confused by our mannerisms from time to time. I, I completely sympathize with you. I have to deal with men at work, and that's hard enough. Now, do you have to deal with them romantically? I don't even want to get into that. But in any event, we broke up, and then um, the school year was starting to end, so I was you know packing up my stuff, getting ready to go home for the summer, and I was going to transfer to Arizona State. Now, when I was there... There was this girl that lived next door to me, and a uh, pretty girl, you know, actually she very much kind of resembles my, my wife. And, you know, it's really hard when I do these podcasts to try to maintain anonymity to the people I'm talking about. I mean, I don't know, if God forbid I should go viral one day, and then I talk about this person, and then, you know, oh my God, I can't believe you talked about me on your podcast. I can't believe you told all my business like that. So I really do try to maintain anonymity to the people I'm talking about. Unless, of course, you're an idiot, like some of the people I talk about at work, and you put yourself on blast. But we'll come back to that. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, what ended up happening is me and this girl, uh, she lived next door to me in the dorms. And I used to talk to her every once in a while. Like I said, pretty girl. Kind of reminds me of my wife. She was, you know, kind of a heavy set black little lady, really cute face, you know, nice girl. And she always would, you know, I would see her maybe coming back from the gym or something and she would make a comment like, yeah, I'm going to come by and say hi to you later on, you know, and um, uh, I was like, okay, cool, you know, whatever, you know, so, but she never did. She would say that just like, she said that to me probably four or five times in the year and a half I was there. So I always waited for her to come by and say hello and she never did. So now it's the end of the school year and I'm never going to come back to the school. So now I decide, okay, well, you know what? If she's not going to come say hi to me, I'm going to go say hi to her. So I go and I knock on her door and I say, hey, you know, I'm leaving uh, pretty soon. Do you want to come by and hang out? 
And she was like, yeah, sure, you know. So she comes by and, you know, we sit and we talk and, you know, and, you know, things progress and we end up, you know, doing the wild thing. You know, no no big deal. We're two consenting adults. You know, we, you know, we did what we, we did and it was great. And, you know, that was it. And I never really had a one night stand before. That was kind of my first. So... I don't know if I did a good job of it. I tried not to make it feel cheap, you know, but I mean, I was 19, you know, and she was a little bit older than me, maybe 24. And, you know, it kind of was what it was. She said hello to me the next day and that was it. The next day I left uh, for the summer and I didn't come back and I never really spoke to her again either. I didn't get her phone number. It was just kind of was what it was. So fast forward, gosh, I don't know how much further down the road. I mean, probably, I mean... By this time, I'm married. I think I had my first kid by then, so it's got to be around 15 years down the road, like a good 15 years down the road. I decide, you know what? I'm going to look her up. I'm going to look her up. I remember her name for some reason because she had a very unique name, so I looked up her name, and it turns out that this girl is, of all things, she's a romance novelist. She writes romantic books and the only reason i you know and the only reason i looked it up is because my wife at the time was reading the 50 shades uh books and a couple other romance in the novels you know she was really into them for a while and i was like babe you're never gonna believe this what like yeah you know remember, remember this girl i told you about from college she's a romance novelist and of course and <laughs> we kind of looked at each other like oh shit i mean not to be a narcissistic guy, but what's the first thing that you would think of if a girl you had a one-night stand with was now a romance novelist? Did she write about me in one of those books? <laughs> and if so, was it was it horrible? Or like, you know, he just, you know, he's he came over and, you know, we had this wonderful night and he never spoke to me again. Or, you know, or would she take that, you know, uh, <laughs> would she take that... Um, that experience and build on it. And uh, I don't know, man, it's a really, I mean, I didn't, I haven't read it and it sucks because I would love to promote her on my channel and give her the credit. But at the same time, you know, I mean, that's, I think it would do more damage to tell this story. And then <laughs> I don't know what, what would you guys do? What, what would you guys do if you found out that somebody that you spent the night with has since become a romance novelist and is now writing books to entertain the masses about, you know, and I mean, as an author, I'm sure she draws from her own experiences. So, I mean, is it narcissistic of me to think that I would be in it to some degree? I mean, I'm sure she didn't use my name, but I mean, would she use that experience? And <laughs> I don't know. That's a really weird thing, you know, because what again? Well, what if she blows up? What if she, you know, becomes this huge worldwide author like J.K. Rowling, or you know, you know, someone who's really famous, and then you know, they start asking her questions like, "Well, how'd you come up with this uh, with this character?" Well, it was an experience I had in college, and I'm like, oh shit, you know, then <laughs> what if she becomes famous, and then I become famous, and then before you know it, we're both on Ellen. And it's like, oh, so you guys, yeah. And then in college, yeah. And then you wrote, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> then all of a sudden, all these really tough questions start coming up. And then I got to think about my wife and my family. And she's got kids now, you know, on Facebook. I've seen her. She's got a beautiful daughter, you know, and I don't want <laughs> I don't want to make trouble for her family. So it's, I don't know, man. It's just really weird dynamic. Let me know in the comments. What would you guys do in a situation like this? Would you reach out to that person? Would you ask them, hey, you know, did you, did you write about me in your books? Or do you even remember who I am? I mean, it was all, I mean, it was over 20 years ago at this point. Did, would that person even remember who I am? You know, I mean, it's, a, it's, I don't know. It's just something I thought I'd share with you guys. It's kind of a weird dynamic. And if you guys want to check out my Red Room, like, share, and subscribe to BJBL Unleashed on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram while you're at it. And I will see you guys next time for more Unleashed.